So what's your name? Devaney. Fourth and under, I was just bullied because of my height. <laughs> Skyscraper, Space Needle. Don't know where that one came from. Somebody decided to call me the Twin Towers because there was someone who was my height exactly. So every time they'd see us together, Twin Towers! I just want to be like five foot, I don't want to be five foot four. Nerdiest characteristic, I play video games. <laughs> so what's your worst habit? Biting my nails. Last time you cried and why? Uh, Thanksgiving when my dad didn't show up. I remember um, I went to the bathroom and I sat, I sat in the bathroom for a little bit and cried because he wasn't there and he wasn't going to be able to come. How's it going with your dad? I rarely see him. He lost his license for quite a while just because he went to jail. Did you say it was a DUI? Uh, I, think so. I think it was. Do you think that you'll drink in high school? No, I would never. I call him and text him, but it's just no point. I want to be an author. That sounds intriguing. What do you want to write about? Um, I'm more into like a rom romantic horror. I'm in the middle of writing one of them right now. You're very verbal. Everybody says that. Everybody's just like, you, you... You're funny, you're chatty. <laughs> you're not afraid to be you're like, hey, girlfriend. I do that all the time. I look up to someone, hey, girlfriend. Like, what? I was sexually assaulted when I was 13 by a guy who was 17. It was very secluded. You could not see anything. And I would tell him that I was not comfortable with it, but he would do it anyways and say that I'd like it and they'd thank him later. Never did I thank him later. I hate myself. I cried every night and I snapped. I turned to drugs and alcohol all of freshman year. The alcohol and the pills were my safety blanket. <laughs> if somebody who had sexually assaulted you, you wouldn't want to feel anything either. When he did it to me again in March, it was March 5th. I remember the day. I remember what I was wearing. And after it happened, I blamed myself because I believed it was I, what I was wearing provoked him. I was confident, I was happy, my makeup was done perfectly, I looked good, I felt great about myself. And then that happened. And I immediately put on my sweatshirt after. I need to cover up. I, I provoked him. My fault. My fault. How's it going with your dad? My dad is an extreme alcoholic, and at the end of my freshman year, he held a gun to my sister's head. I haven't spoken to him since last November. I work with a kindergarten student at Clark Elementary who has a severe speech impediment, and he's, he's sort of behind in his schoolwork, so what I've been doing lately is I've been doing a reward system with him because he loves drawing. If he writes out like these certain amount of words or writes out these letters and stuff, I'll let him draw me a small picture or I'll let him build something for me. What inspired you to do this? I have a mentor and I've been a part of this program since third grade and I recently decided that I want another child to experience that one-on-one -on -one bond and growth with someone that they trust, and I want someone else to experience what my mentor had given to me and has given to me these year all these years. Do you still have a mentor? I still see her. She knows everything <laughs> about me, and she's one of the reasons why I want to be a teacher. She is the reason I want to be a teacher. She can, she can be a little hard-headed at times with students, but she does it because she cares. And she wants these kids to do well. I've been sober since May 11th. And it, honestly, it's one of the greatest feelings. Last year, if you would have looked at my grades, and you would look at my grades now without looking at the name, completely different person. You would not believe I have all A's and B's right now. 
I wrote a victim impact letter that was like eight pages long. I cannot tell you how many times I cried over that thing. Oh God. I'm sure. Like, like you could see the tears like in the paper when I, when I faxed it over to her. Like I wanted this judge to feel my pain mentally because if you can't understand what I'm going through, how are you gonna be able to make the right judgment in sentencing him? I basically said that, you know, I can move past this, I can pretend it didn't happen, and I can make myself feel better. I told, I told him, I was like, I will never forgive you for what you did to me. You took a few years from me just waiting for the day that I decide that it's not worth holding on to. He was sentenced August 8th of 2015. He got 30 days on work release and then he had to spend 60 days in jail with 24 months on probation, no contact for any girl that was under 16 or any of the victims. Um, he had to do two years of drug and alcohol treatment and no violations or else that time would restart. And he had to register as a sex offender for up to 15 years. I remember the detective came to my school back in December and told me that 10 plus girls have come forward since I have reported it back in March. That's remarkable. Mm. You started this whole thing. I started this whole thing and I, you know, I tried. It's got to be empowering. It, it is, but it isn't. I didn't want this, but I mean, who's to say what if I hadn't have come forward, would any of these other girls have? This teacher, your mentor, what did she do for you through all this? Oh God, <laughs> what didn't she do for me? If I was having an anxiety attack and I needed somewhere to go, I could go to her classroom. She was always there, she's always been there to talk. She's basically my at school mother. I realize that I am worth something and that I can and will accomplish greater things in life. I know what I want to do. I know what I'm going to do. I think high school is definitely about finding yourself. Yeah.